So, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, that's very loud. Um, this is my best karaoke voice. Um, I'm Kieran Lane. I'm, I'm the Solution Engineering Director for Amplins in, in EMEA. Um, as you can tell from my accent, I'm, I'm not from around here. Uh, so I currently live in the UK, and it's very nice to be over visiting the sunshine I did bring it with. Uh, although the humidity, I think, is definitely your, your own. Thanks very much for everybody attending the, the Fireside Chat. Um, I'm here joined with, with Courtney from Tree Carnival. Courtney, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for joining our chat today. My name is Courtney Grisham, uh, e-commerce director at Shoe Carnival. Um, been with the company for 10 years, and it's been a really exciting ride. Um, spent most of my career in the e-commerce space um, on the merchandising side, working through our categories, our site experience, and then um, recently taking on role as director, working more on the strategy and the roadmap side of things. Brilliant, yeah. And we have a couple of um, international folks kind of in the back, I kind of see uh, a couple of friends. Um, obviously, being from outside of the US, uh, Shoe Carnival, do you want to introduce and give us a few words about what is Shoe Carnival? Absolutely. So Shoe Carnival is one of the leading uh, family footwear retailers in the US. Um, we have around 400 stores across the US and Puerto Rico um, and, and growing. Uh, we actually recently acquired a company, uh, Shoe Station, and they're mostly in, in the southern states and um, growing that brand as well. So been around for 45 years. So some of us some of us know us, hopefully hopefully a lot of us, but for the other international folks. But in 40, 40 years, you're doing something right, you know? Yes, so, absolutely. Very good. So thank you, first of all, for being a, a, an Amplins and Algoia customer. Um, what we want to do is, is really delve into how you're using the technologies. Uh, but before we do that, obviously, as you say, in those 40 years, you know, there's, there's been a lot of change. Um, you know, what are the changes or what are the challenges that retailers are finding kind of facing today, do you think? Well, I think the, the key challenge really is the economic climate, the uncertainty there, you know, coming off of the big um, kind of e-commerce boom, um, really dur during COVID, you know, kind of that bubble. There was stimulus money in the market. Um, we were finding, you know, sales online were, were higher than ever. And kind of riding a high and then a little bit of reality in 2022. Um, and our customers are grappling with inflation and, and recession times. And, and um, so I think that that's really, you know, a challenge for retailers. We can't control it, but it's a reality and we have to shift priorities. We got to shift our strategy um, and just always be listening and, and you know, keeping um, in tune with what the customers are facing and, and how we can help. Yeah, and I think, I think as you say, keeping up with that customer uh, behavior, um, what, what are the trends or have you seen any changes or shifts in shopping behavior that you've, you've had to react to? Absolutely. Um, this year, especially, you know, a, a big shift to customers. They're really looking for that value. You know, they're, they're needing to stretch their dollars more than before, you know, um, they only have a, a certain amount of that wallet that they can spend on things like um, footwear for their family. So really leaning in on, you know, how do we continue to offer the best value to them? You know, how can we make the brands they want attainable for, for everybody? And so you'll see us and in, in a lot of companies, I mean, I'm seeing it all over, even companies who weren't as promotional before, and now they're running a lot more focus on deals and, and things like that, so. And, and you know, when, when did you first notice those changes? When did you decide that you needed to, you know, evolve and, and react? I really think last year, you know, 2022, um, we weren't sure what was gonna happen. You know, like I said, kind of coming off that 2020 and 2021 um, boom of, of online shopping and, and a lot of customers having some extra money in their pocket, um, in 2022, you know, really mid-year, um, reality kind of hit and it's like, okay, we need to really change some strategy here, focus more on value, um, still the big brands, but how do we get the biggest brands the best value for the customer? And um, obviously, as we said, you are an Amplian San Algolia customer. How did you, or where did you hear about us all first? Yeah, so, um, well, first we were making a move um, to a headless environment. Um, and we had been a former Amplians customer, not as our CMS tool, but um, we were use, utilizing them to host product images. And this was even before we were with Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Um, so former customer, when we decided we were going to um, move into Headless and then we were speaking with partners and vendors, it was kind of like it just made sense, you know, that we knew them, that relationship was already there. Um, they knew the goals and the challenges and what we wanted to accomplish, and it just checked the boxes. 
Fantastic. And, you know, how was, what were the challenges that your, you know, your, your team sort of faced or the specific challenges that they, they, they were, you know, encountering that we were able to help with? Well, certainly, you know, my team, you know, more on that merchandising experience side of the website, we were facing a lot of challenges, just, you know, how do we, how do we make experiences keep up with customer expectations? You know, um, how do we have tools that empower us to make the changes that we need to make as opposed to where we were, which was kind of like, we want a new template for this that needs to go to a developer. Um, we need to, you know, we want to change some categories in here. We're going to have to write a ticket for development. That was just such a challenge because we had all these big ideas and it's like we can never seem to get it in front of the customer um, just because of our tech stack previously. Right. And and how did Amplience and Algolia kind of change that? Or how, how was that able to, you know, realize those big, big ideas or those big changes? So really, I mean, it's just the power of, of both of the tools, you know, putting the ability, you know, into the, the business user's hands of, um, you know, simply without any involvement of code, without being adhered to a strict template, um, you know, you can just have it readily available in the platforms. You know, if, if it is a new landing page experience or maybe it's something, you know, on the Algolia side around um, search, new search rules, you know, representing the, the products on our product listing pages in different ways. It's just having that um, that ability to do so um, without having to, like I said, involve um, so many other teams to get that accomplished. I mean, and, and having those teams involved, how has life changed? Has your workflow changed? Your processes changed? Certainly. Um, I would say, you know, workflow wise, I mean, we're able to be so much more productive. I mean, there, you know, there's things that are taking half the time you know, that they did previously. Um, and so, you know, some of our inner workflows, like I mentioned, um, you know, there's certain processes. Seasonality is so important to your merchandising strategy. So just as an example, um, you know, let's say we're, we're moving between seasons, we're moving out of winter, it's, it's summer. Something as simple as, you know, I want all of my categories to lead with sandals and sneakers and we're gonna push boots kind of to the back. Even those types of changes before would require um, more teams to be involved, ticket writing and such. And now it's just, you know, we see a need and we see the customer telling us what they want and we can quickly react to it. And that, that fast to, to market approach is just a game changer. Brilliant. And we kind of, during our, our kind of talk last week, you mentioned those tickets, you know, it has a re had a reduction in, in these tickets that you're having to log with those internal teams and... Yes, and, and some of those internal teams are here. Are they? Um, okay. They can probably, <laughs> they can probably tell you they're, there's less tickets around. Um, I just wanted a banner on this. Okay, then just do it. That's fantastic. <laughs> Instead of um, all of the, the back and forth before. Yeah, I think that's that's a key selling value is you know less tickets. It's always quite a quite a nice nice one to have. Um, thanks. And you know, being users of the the technologies, you know, what what are the your favorite or most used sort of features and capabilities, say, of the Ampliance platform? So in Ampliance, you know, something that's been a, a real game changer for us is. Um, their ability around publishing experiences. The user really has um, the, the power to, you know, some, some experiences maybe you want to publish immediately and that's going to go to the site. I mean, you blink and it's on the site in real time. You're not waiting on an overnight replication, um, which is perfect because in the retail world, we, we can't wait. You know, the customers expect it now. We need to be able to meet those expectations. But then also there's times where Scheduling out content is, is very important as well, and we're not ready for it to go live, but, you know, the ability to just schedule the publishing as well. And then also, you know, with Amplants, their um, content hub is just fantastic. It's, it's the perfect place. It's so organized. We can get all of the pieces that we need if we want to build a landing page. We can simply, simply go into content hub and search up anything that we have is going to live there um, before it required a, a note to the creative team, hey, I need some images that, you know, feature a Nike sneaker. Okay, well, now we can just get them in there. So, again, more t less tickets, should I say. That's, that's, yes. um, I'm seeing a bit of a trend here. Yes, um, absolutely, a trend trend. And on the inverse, you know, what, what are the, the most beneficial uh, Algolia capabilities that you and the teams are using? Oh, goodness. Um, we, we've accomplished quite a lot with Algolia um, and, and loving that partnership as well. Um, one of the things that we adopted and it was at a perfect timing um, right around Black Friday last year and that's their dynamic re-ranking. 
so that that is a tool in the platform that um, is, you know, using AI to understand how to best rank these products, you know, based on conversion or action click through in allowing that to just run in the background. We can do merchandising rules on top of it, which is really important. You know, sometimes there's key items that it's like, OK, thank you, dynamic re-ranking, but we still want to pin these few products can do both um, seamlessly. Um, and in that tool in particular, you know, we, we know has had such a huge impact to, to revenue and conversion. And then also, if there's any merchandisers in, in the audience, um, their visual editor is fantastic. No more weird code looking screens, which merchandisers are terrified of. And I have a lot of technical folks here. They're probably like, yeah, you guys don't know what you're doing when we, <laughs> when we show you code. Um, but the ability to just see our products drag and drop. Where do I want it? Where do I want these categories? And it's just brilliant. Yeah, no, absolutely. Having that visual representation is so key. But then obviously making those data-led decisions are, are, are so important. Yes. And it kind of brings on to the next question of, you know, what, what has leveraging these capabilities, how has it impacted you and your teams? Well, it certainly um, had a ton of impact um, to our KPIs and, and business goals. We've made some changes around landing page experiences as we've learned from the customer, you know, what, what experiences are really resonating with them and in converting the best. Um, we've made a, a recent um, move kind of with Amplans around what our landing pages look like. And we're seeing, you know, as much as like a 6% conversion lift from that. And then with Algolia, we've done quite a bit, but one of the most interesting things that we've done and pretty recently is we were able to utilize the Algolia tool to um, split out our catalog and showcase at the color level. That was really important to us because with shoes, it's all about the color that you want, the pattern that you want. Before, everything on a product listing page was at the style level. So with a bunch of tiny swatches, <laughs> and you would just hope that maybe they would stop and look for the color, but we know the customer's moving fast. They're scrolling. They don't, you know, they might miss that. Oh my gosh, we did have that in the print they wanted. So utilizing Algolia, moving that um, ability to the front end instead of having to go into the back end catalog and try to figure out how to separate this stuff out, which I think, um, I think my tech folks would tell you that that would have been a headache. It was figuring it out more like in a matter of a day, testing it, boom, it's live, and we're seeing a great lift from that as well. And we had this discussion only today as to whether my trainers are you know, navy or blue is similar sort of thing. Right, yeah. you know, so answers on a postcard today, please, if you, you know, I'm, I'm the color brown one. Um, as, as users of the platform, um, and you know, you're, you're really utilizing and, and pushing the envelope, the question really is kind of what's next? What's the big next thing for, for Shunin Carnival? What's in, what's in the future? Well, the future, um, and any, any of you guys that came over here from Connections are, are going to be familiar with this because we've been talking about it all day or hearing about it. And that's um, how do we utilize more AI in the experience? And what does the future look like um, with AI um, and with our tools, you know, around things like predictive search um, with Algolia, you know, perhaps generative AI with Amplians. Um, so really just, you know, what does the future look like there and how can we immerse these tools, you know, with that and come along with us um, into that journey? And then also another term we hear a lot is um, personalization. You know, how can we utilize these tools in our tech stack to make sure that we're creating, you know, authentic and personalized experiences for our customers um, across the board because, uh, you know, if it's me shopping on Shoe Carnival, I, I want the latest Nike. Um, if it's my mom, she wants the best deal. <laughs> so how do we really personalize those experiences? Yeah, no, and, and as you sort of say, is how, um, and we spoke about this uh, earlier as well, is how do you think Algolia and Ampliance are going to be able to help and support and use, uh, adopt those new capabilities or help in that roadmap? Yep, I, I see, you know, both of both tools will be a big part of that. I know that, you know, Algolia already has, um, you know, some AI capabilities and, and like dynamic re-ranking that we've already adopted. But um, Algolia, you know, has a great listening community and I'm lucky enough to be on one of their advisory boards and we're talking about these things together with the merchant community, you know, what's next? And they're really listening and, and clued in on how to um, challenge their, their own tools. And I know AI is gonna be a huge part of that. Um, and then Ampliance as well, you know, just just moving forward with them, I think, I think we've really just kind of tapped and scratched the surface, you know, in, in the future, there's just so much more that we can do together. That's brilliant. And 
Well, well, thank you, Corny. And, and we, we kind of wanted to then maybe open it up to the floor and ask if anybody has any questions, kind of, you know, we have an, a, a fantastic guest with us, uh, very experienced in, in not only in, in the e-commerce space, but with the tools. Is there anything that the cloud would like to ask or the, or I'll probably start one if that's right. One of the questions we often get, you know, um, we discuss with our customers is from the point of view of doing more um, with, with the technology, and organizationally, how are you set up? So could you give us a kind of a breakdown or an idea of what your team makeup is, is it looks like? Yes, absolutely. And um, we're, something that we're kind of proud of is we do a whole lot with really small teams. Um, so my team of direct reports that are more responsible for that merchandising, that um, user experience side um, is made up of seven people. <laughs> um, a merchandising manager, obviously the content folks and the site merchandisers. Um, in, in very small team and we have thousands and thousands of products, hundreds of brands. Um, but you know, really they're able, we're able to do so much, um, with that small team because of tools like Alloy and Impulse. That's, that's incredible. And giving, knowing your site and seeing what you do, having a, a, such a small team is, 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 is quite, quite, um, you know, it's phenomenal. Um, one of the, the other channel or, um, key areas that we spoke about was peak and hype events. And everybody talks about um, you know cyber cyber week, you know uh, cyber Monday and so on, being being the core peak. You guys have other times that are are quite peaky uh, as as well. Can you give us an idea of what what is what is the peak for Chew Carnival? Yeah, certainly um, going into it soon, um, and that's back to school. Our business, you know, we're all about shoes for the family, shoes at a great value. You know, the best brands for everybody, for um, you know the kids included. So back to school time is huge for us a lot goes into the experiences that we want to um, have for back to school. So, you know, some custom sorting rules, you know, with Algoya, obviously a lot of landing page and, and more of that creative experience with Amplants and what's that gonna look like. So yeah, that's certainly, you know, our, our peak season and then, you know, Black Friday and Cyber Week, obviously. And again, using things like the scheduling capabilities, but what yes. happens with you need to react or you need to change something quickly? How, how do you, uh, account for, you know, quick changes? Well, now it's pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> um, in the past, not so much, but yeah, I mean, you know, we talked about it, you know, the customer, we need to be able to keep up with them, you know, their expectations, what, what's changing. So, um, you, we were kind of chatting about a little example of, you know, maybe there's a key product that's going to be a real driver of the season, but with the supply chain issues, maybe we're surprised that it's coming in late you know, oh, we need to pivot some marketing. We need to, um, you know, push back a little bit on on our launch of that. And we're, you know, we're able to do that so much easier now um, than in the past. That's brilliant. No, thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Are there any questions in the room? Oh my goodness. Uh, typical day at Shoe Carnival. Um, I'm not sure there is a typical day. I, I feel like every day could, could throw in a different direction, but, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I really believe in it and, and always talk to my team is, you know, start your day off in the numbers, you know, know your business. Um, so I would say starting the day, looking at yesterday, how did we do? Are we, are we up? Are we down? Do we need to make some pivots? Um, that kind of leads a lot of the discussion of the day. And then, you know, things as we're coming up on a big season, like back to school, a lot of the typical day is meeting with our marketing team. What are the big ideas? Do we have everything covered that we want to tell it back to school? meeting with our merchant teams a lot um, daily. It, you know, what are, the, what are your key products? What's the timing? Do you have any big product launches that we should know about that we need to work with Amplants and create a great experience for? Um, the day can go in so many paths, but um, I would say that those are some of, the, some of the key things. So a typical day isn't talking at connections. This is not a typical day, but this is a special fun day though. Oh my goodness, we're pushing content live daily. Um, yeah. It, I mean, obviously it kind of depends on, on what the need is, but I would say, yeah, daily, it would not be uncommon that, that we push some sort of new experience live or we, we tweak an experience and then push the update live. And that's one of the best things with, with Amplants is, you know, sometimes things get goofed up, you know, we're, we're in technology, um, you know, oops, I put the wrong ad out there. I put that price message was wrong or that product photo was wrong. Um, we can simply, you know, make those changes now clear the cache, it's live. Um, before it was much more, you know, 
scary. It's like, and now I got to tell development that I messed up. They have to do a manual replication, <laughs> all of those things. So I'm seeing some happy faces down the back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a lot of rules that we'll make around sorting, pinning, boosting um, different products and in, in categories. And it could be a lot of times it is for a certain campaign or a sale. And so one of the things that has been automated is um, being able to schedule rules. So we can now say, oh, on, on this category page at this time between these dates, I want these products to be at the top or I want these brands to be at the top. And then you can, you can just have an end date to that before any rule that we made um, was kind of just forever until you remembered to go undo the rule make new rules. Now, you know, that ability to just schedule them out is amazing. A lot less calendar reminders of, hey, take that off, <laughs> take that offline, make a new rule. We're just scheduling and scheduling out. So, you know, I would say that that's, that's one of the biggest challenges. Anyone that's on the merchandising side and working really closely, especially with their buying teams, I hear it every day, you know, hey, you know, you're giving too much love to this and, and where's my category or where is my brand? So that's, you know, that has always been a challenge and I think it will always continue to be somewhat, but with, you know, with the use of Algolia, it, it's helped by being able to set up some custom rules um, around, you know, more, maybe more specific searches where, you know, we do have some brands that aren't as popular, but they're, they're more, um, they serve a more unique purpose, whether it be like more accessible footwear um, around like wide widths and things like that. So while that may not be like our most popular footwear, so you may not see it to the top of everything, with Algolia, we're able to make a lot more custom rules. So if we know that a customer is really looking for something more specific, there's your opportunity to boost and showcase some of those other brands that wouldn't be, you know, the Nikes and Adidas's and Crocs. My best advice, um, retailers looking to go headless is, is jump in. And don't let your, um, at the time, senior merchandising manager be terrified of it. <laughs> because I was. It, it's a lot of change. I mean, it changes all of your processes, everything that you do. Um, but being on this side of it, it's kind of like, wow, you know, we would never go back. We're going to keep going forward. You know, we want to do more of it. So I think keeping that open mind, trusting the tools, um, finding, finding tools with um, great partners, um, you know, great support teams. We have great support from both Implants and Algolia um, that can really join the journey with you and understand your goals. I think that's important, um, you know, you, to work with with companies that understand what you're wanting to accomplish and they want to help you accomplish that. Oh, that's amazing advice. And I, I love that. Just, just do it. Just do so it. That's a, that's a footwear reference as well, I think. Oh, yeah, that's, that's Nike. Oh, copyright. <laughs> it really was the first time that we were able to get an experience live, I mean, immediately. That was kind of when I was like, okay, they're onto something here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty good stuff. You know, realizing that once you learn it, it's so easy. Now, when I have to honestly go back, um, we have a, I mentioned it briefly, we, we acquired Shoe Station. So we kind of have a sister website and they're not in the headless environment. So now when I have to go back to pre-headless, it's like, how were we doing this before? This is way more complicated. Um, but it really was that light bulb of when we first felt like we just created a really unique experience. We did it really fast. Um, that was when the, when the light bulb went off. Absolutely. Um, and, and I won't call him out, but there's somebody in the room that's recently had to learn both. Um, and I think he would, would agree <laughs> that uh, he's shaking his head. Okay, good. Um, he would agree that, you know, learning the headless tools, Algolia and the implants, um, just so much more user friendly in the platforms. I mean, you know, when you get in there, it's very intuitive for somebody that's a non-technical person, somebody with more of that merchandiser mindset. Um, so yes, and then and we've been going through training and, and, and learning uh, the pre-headless tools and that's just much more complicated. It's much more um, developer friendly than the newer things. So yeah, that has been a really big change for us. That's brilliant. Conscious of time. Thank you so much, Courtney. It's been amazing talking to you. Thank you thank for you. having me. Thanks for, for being an amazing partner and customer. Um, and thank you to everybody in the room for being so engaging and coming up with some, some amazing questions. It's been a, a pleasure speaking with you. And, you know, again, thank you to Courtney and the whole Shoe Carnival team.
Yes, thank you everyone for coming.